have reached the end of our time with Kasparov. And what fitting way to go out than his immortal game against Topalov in 99 when Kasparov was at the peak of his powers. In 99, that was the year that Kasparov hit 2851, which I believe is the second highest rating in the all-time list, only after Carlson. But Carlson has many, many years to go before he can match that 1986 to 2005. I think there was only three months where Kasparov wasn't number one in the world, but he had to be, you know, <laughs> top three. So it's kind of ridiculous when you thought of chess from that time period, you think of Kasparov. Will Carlson have that type of impact? Until I see that type of impact, I still consider Kasparov the greatest player of all time, and we're about to see his best game. Let's get started. So we have a perk, and after c6, black is signaling that he's ready to play b5 and attack on this side of the board. So white is signaling with f3, he's getting his own lever going to attack on this side of the board. Much like in the last game we looked at in the dragon, when we have this queen and bishop battery, we see how they're working together in order to make that trade to weaken the king side if the king goes over there. b5, knight ge2, getting rid of the b. A3, and here, I mean, the, the engine that I was evaluating this game with was confused at certain points and gave an improper eval, but I'm pretty confident that A5 would be a thematic move in the position for black um, as he's just expanding on the queen side. Well, E5 was played, and this is now opening the door that Tactics in the center are going to be a big possibility later. So castle's queenside, king b1, and black is preparing to go the other way. So white's looking at this reroute, knight c1, with the idea that the knight can come to a5 since this square is going to be weak. Ed4, rook d4, tickle on the rook. G3, and right here, this is a moment where more than likely D5 should be played, and we get this, this kind of liquidation, and I feel like this would have been the better way to go where, you know, it's a roughly equal position. But after knight A5, bishop A8 was played. Now d5, but it makes all the difference with the bishop on that square on h3. The thing to notice is the weakness of the black king on a7, <coughs> and the peace harmony, excuse me, that white completely has. Every single one of white's pieces is involved in this attack. After d4, Knight d5, rook takes d4. Now, this starts an absolutely nasty and devastating combination. If queen takes queen, we simply take back with our rook, but you, you got to ask why. He takes the rook, rook e7 check. <laughs> So, what happens if he just takes the rook? Are we going to have some problems here? Because once we get to this point, what, what can he do? I mean, this is looking, oh, can't go there. Pretty devastating, right? So, 
He moves his king up. Check. If he blocks with the queen. Check. Check. Mate. So what if he takes the knight like he did in the game? Check. He's threatening going queen b3 mate. So rook a7, threatening mate by taking on a6. He's got to take the bishop. And again, if the queen takes the rook, queen b3 mate. So do you want to trade queens? No, but I'll get some material back. Check. I like this next one. Check. 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 And how often do you see a king go from here to here in a game and queens are still on the board? Not often, right? <laughs> Bishop F1. Hitting the queen. Setting up devastating tactics. It is, of course, poison. Rook d2. Rook d7, saying, take my rook. Gets the queen. Gets a rook. And it looks like black may be able to hold this. Queen a8. Stopping that pawn from moving forward. And after queen a7, Topalov had had enough and resigned this. That's why he's the best, man. Absolutely monstrous calculation from the greatest player of all time, Gary Kasparov.